I know, I'm a little bit surprised too. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? I'm here to unbox the Apple Watch SE, and this is a little bit significant because I've never used an Apple Watch. So what you're basically going to watch right now, oh, there's a pun, is me using this for a day because it's literally my first 24 hours with an Apple Watch of any kind. Just so everybody knows, and you can probably tell from the title already, I have the Apple Watch SE. This is the uh, Space Gray with the Space Gray Sports Band. Yeah, over at Best Buy, they didn't have the Solo Loop, which I really wanted to try. Apparently I'm a size five there. Uh, but one cool thing happened at Best Buy while I was there waiting for this to pick up. Homie over here at the curbside pickup for Best Buy, I'm picking up the Apple Watch SE. He noticed the plate on my car, which is Tech T. And he was like, is this who I think it is? So he comes and he knocks on my window and he's like, hey, um, I think I know you, Josh. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> he's, out, he's over getting my order right now. That's funny. So yeah, shouts out to the homie that was there. Uh, he just noticed my plate, which says Tech T, and he thought, is this who I think it is? Or does this guy just really love Boba? By the way, confession, I don't like Boba. Well, not anymore, at least. So let's just go ahead and undo all of this. By the way, in case any of you are wondering how is he going to use that, he barely uses an iPhone. Joke's on you, I do use my iPhone actually quite a lot, uh, mainly because I have a lot of friends who are in a group chat that is only on iMessage, so thanks guys. But I figured this would be a good time to get into the Apple Watch because if there's anything that Apple has been doing right this year, it's putting SE behind a number of different lines. The iPhone SE was compelling because of its price, and now the Apple Watch SE is compelling again because of its price. So if you are in the Apple ecosystem, but you haven't really been into wearables in general, well, this might be the easy barrier of entry you've been waiting for. Ooh, okay. Pretty nice packaging, nice and colorful. Lifting this up, so we have the sport band here, and of course the watch body, all the fun right here. So let's start off with the band. Again, another one of those tabs to make things easy. Look at these, we have a uh, small, medium, medium, large, different sizes. Uh, by the way, if you are really into Apple products and you have used Apple watches before, obviously none of this is gonna be new to you, but this is all very fresh to me. So let me, let me have my little unboxing moment right now. Feels pretty nice, I mean, it's just a silicone sports strap, nothing too fancy or different here, nothing out of the ordinary. Put that up here and get to the watch. No tabs here because it will just open up like so. Designed by Apple in California, I will admit, it says California, gotta love that. I am a Californian through and through. Have ourselves a charging adapter here. No brick, but then again, I have a USB hub nearby where I can just plug this in in order to charge. Open your band box, follow the steps to attach your band to the Apple Watch, swipe up for control center and swipe down for notification touch and hold the display to change your watch face. You have a digital crown and of course the side button double clicking for Apple Pay. This is obviously very different from a typical smartphone unboxing because this thing is tiny. So here we go. I went for the smaller one, by the way, because since this is supposed to be about the more affordable Apple Watch SE, well, that's the 40 millimeter edition at 279. I think all in all, it turned out to be something like 309 with taxes. And it was an easy pickup because the 40 millimeter edition was available at my local Best Buy. Oh, I turned it on already. Feels like I did it right. I think I'm good to go. So I didn't go for any crazy additions here. I know that there are more colors on the Apple Watch Series 6, but again, I wanna go for the cheaper one because maybe a lot of you out there are looking to get into the Apple Watch ecosystem uh, like I am for the first time in this video. Apple Watch. Gotta love the easy ways of getting things set up in the Apple ecosystem. Hit continue. There is that new feature where you can set up Apple Watches that have cellular connectivity in particular uh, for family members. Uh, that way you have connectivity with say your elderly uh, relatives and family members or even your kids. That way they have connectivity without needing a full smartphone. Obviously not what we're gonna do here. All right, here we go. Putting on an Apple Watch for the very first time. I could use the 44 millimeter probably, but that's because of the shape of the Apple Watch. Though I think this won't be too hard to get used to. And honestly, it keeps things pretty simple. All right, Apple Watch is paired. It looks like we're good to go. I know that fitness is a big deal for the Apple Watches. This is making me feel like, I don't know, I'm already feeling that pressure, Apple. You're already, you're already telling me I'm not moving enough. I'm gonna go for moderately, even though I'm going to try to get back into working out. I haven't been working out a lot lately. Daily exercise goal, 30 minutes. Yep, yep, I'm there with you. Daily stand goal, ooh. 
That's the max is 12. Let's go for nine <laughs> because I edit a lot, okay? Give me a break. And it's syncing. So I think that'll be it for the setup. Uh, and I'll get into some of the basics and some of the other things that I'm getting used to on this watch in the rest of this video. See, the thing is I'm recording this video in like two parts. What I'm doing right now is getting this unboxed, set up. I'm going to go through some of the features here uh, and I'm going to do one of the main things these watches are supposed to help you with, sleep track. And it's not going to be like a straight comparison, but I am going to wear also my Aura Ring, which is widely known as one of the best sleep trackers out there, and see how the data just compares. It's not going to be a way for me to see if the Apple Watch is better or anything like that. We're just going to compare it to another sleep tracker, which is dedicated to the task. So with that said, um, yeah, I will see you in the morning and I'll give you some thoughts on the Apple Watch experience so far from someone who has never used an Apple Watch. I would say good morning, but it's already 1.30. Uh, here's the thing though, the watch actually did a really good job of waking me up because the vibration motor on here, the haptics rather, they're actually really impressive. You might see YouTubers or people on Twitter talk about haptics, and I get what they mean when it comes to the way Apple handles it. Instead of just a vibration motor that just goes on your wrist with most smartwatches, uh, like Jaime would say, it's almost as if someone's pressing down on that area. So there's a feeling on here that I'm actually being just kind of poked by the watch. And this ends up being something really useful for the most simplest tasks like notifications. Now I did mention that I was going to kind of compare the sleep tracking of the watch to my Aura Ring. And now the Aura Ring is a very special piece of tech, it's a smart ring that is widely known as one of the best sleep trackers around. And it is usually one of the most accurate sleep trackers in my arsenal of different lines of tech. Now the Aura Ring in the app, which I'll show right now, shows that I have a generally good readiness right now that's based upon many different metrics like my heartbeat and my heart rate variability, as well as what it perceives my sleep time was. And according to the sleep time, I was basically in bed from around 1 30 in the morning i know i slept late to around 9 15 in the morning which was the case even though i set my alarm on the apple watch for 7 a.m and it did wake me up you know i didn't get out of bed right away now i get that alternatively the apple watch is not going to give the further stats of like deep sleep REM sleep or anything like that, but I will admit that it was pretty accurate about the total time of sleep. When I first was uh, looking at this graph, it said that I woke up around 7.35, uh, but then a couple of hours later, I guess it found even more data to extrapolate that I actually got out of bed or woke up at 9.11. That's pretty accurate when compared to the 9.22 that the Aura Ring said, so I'll give it a few points there. It would be great to have the further stats though. So we'll see, I'm going to do some sort of full review on the Apple Watch SE, especially with other features like the other applications, maybe Fitness Plus, and a few of the other tracking uh, abilities of this wearable. And if you're wondering why I didn't go for the Apple Watch Series 6, because it has the blood oximeter and it also has an always-on display, well, I kind of thought about it for a while, and even though the processor on the Series 6 might be a little bit more updated, I personally thought that those extra features were not what I needed at the moment. Number one, an always-on display might deplete the battery life, and honestly, if I'm going to look at my watch and it wakes when I lift it up, then that covers me anyway. And then when it comes to measuring blood oxygen levels, well, there are people in my family who are in the medical field, my mom is a former nurse, I already have the finger-based ones for that, so I have ways of testing it without having to rely on sensors that a watch has uh, that might not be as accurate. After all, Apple says themselves, this is not a medical device and you should not look at any fitness tracker as a full-on medical device. There are data points that they can give you uh, so that you can make some sort of decision as to what further testing you might need to get for accurate results. Uh, but yeah, I don't really rely on wearables for that kind of metric that often. Tracking sleep, tracking your heart rate, all of that stuff, good data points, but definitely the first step towards actual testing. So I've unboxed the watch, I've given some impressions on the design and sort of the wear of it all, uh, but what has the experience been like after I did that first initial test of sleep tracking? Well, honestly, it's been really positive. Let me be clear that I never thought the Apple Watch was ever a good looking device. Compared to actual timepieces and plenty of other smart watches that actually adhere to design cues that watches, real watches have, the Apple Watch was something alien. If I can share a quick complaint and takeaway sort of dichotomy here, First complaint is on the 40 millimeter edition, the crown just looks <laughs> oversized. It just kind of looks like this blemish or a pimple on the side of the body of the watch. Uh, not ideal. However, 
I do think that having the 40 millimeter edition makes this more like a wearable and less like a watch, and that makes me look at it in a different way. So it's a good thing that the Apple Watch SE still has some of the big fundamentals. The screen is really awesome. I'm already enjoying seeing like the nice animations that Apple generally puts into their OS elements. And honestly, notifications have already been a big highlight. I have to get into the options of the actual phone app and change up what notifications I might want and whatnot. But when a Gmail notification came in and I was already annoyed that it was like a spam email, I already went into the options there and I told the watch to deliver it silently. So I will get a little dot telling me that I have emails coming in, but it's not going to ping me physically and audibly that an email came in. Otherwise, with apps that I really want to get every notification from, the sound and haptics actually make the experience very nice. Things like Telegram and Twitter, uh, especially Twitter DMs and Twitter mentions, and of course iMessage for that group chat like I mentioned earlier. This is going to be my way of keeping up with my friends who pretty much all use iPhones, and that's why I still have my iPhone 11 as one of my main devices to keep up with them. So $279 might be a little bit much for just a notification center on your wrist. It's for that reason that I'll visit a couple of other wearables that I feel like people would like if 279 is still way too much money. I'll try to use some apps and I do love this whole like bubbly app uh, menu that they have had for quite a while now even though it takes me a while to figure out what app I actually want to use. Uh, and then I'll get into other things like the watch faces which I've already picked one that has complications for my most used things like checking the sleep data or checking the air quality in fire ravaged Southern California. And on the bottom left here, I love this, there's already a complication for my fasting app Simple so I could just use the watch to track my fasting. One thing I really want to do is get more bands for this because I would love to change up the look. It's just that the Space Gray at 40 millimeters was the cheapest one and that is the story I wanted to focus on in this video. So if you want to see me dive into some of the accessories, some of the bands, I mean we all love changing up the look sometimes, let me know about that and the Apple Watch SE in general in the comment sections down below. At the very least drop some likes on this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. With all of that said, I'm going to call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea everybody. I know it's LaCroix.